hundreds of thousands of people just got sent a copy of Valve's new game. But Valve doesn't want you talking about it. What's going on? Major game studios collectively spend billions of dollars every year on marketing, doing everything humanly possible to just get eyes on their game. Yet Valve is doing the opposite, going as far as banning journalists from talking about their new secret title and asking players to not share anything about the game with anyone. It's so weird that they're doing this. Just like thousands of others, I can sit down right now and see the art, play the game, yet Valve doesn't want me to show you, my audience, what it looks like. But as a game developer myself, I'll honor Valve's wishes to not talk about or show the game directly. But I do want to talk about why Valve is being so secretive. For context, Valve only releases a few games every decade, usually developing titles that highlight their newest software or hardware. So you'd think with a brand new Valve game, promotion material would just be plastered all over Steam. But instead, every link associated with the game takes you to the home screen. They literally have zero public imagery aside from this simple logo. So if they don't want people to know about their new game, why give out so many keys and let players just invite all of their friends? Well, I've got four theories that might just explain why Valve kind of wants you to know about their new game deadlock, but only in their own very specific way. Starting with number one, the Streisand effect. By making deadlock a secret, more people will want to know and talk about it. For context, the idea comes from a lawsuit between Barbara Streisand and a photographer in 2003. The photographer posted a photo of her Malibu mansion without her permission, and when Barbara sued to have the photo removed from the internet, people became more interested in seeing the photo. Simply put, the more you try censoring information, the more aware the public will become, and it feels like Valve is doing this intentionally. Why? Because Valve knows that humans love gossip, and we do love it. So much so that two thirds of our conversations could be labeled as gossip. And according to multiple psychology journals, we gossip to bond with others in our group, we do it to elevate ourselves or to put down others, and we do it to exchange new or unique information. And you know who really likes to exchange new or unique information? Gamers. Holy hell, word spreads fast in the gamer community. Raise your hand if you have ever had a gamer say something bad about you behind your back. As the Steam expert Chris Zakowski puts it in our call, there's something about video games where people, they're hard to make, so they take a long time to make, but people love to look at them and debate them and think about them and talk about them. They just Again, this is just a theory, but I think Valve intentionally made and released this game quietly because they knew we would want to gossip with one another about a new secret game. Which brings me to my second theory. Valve might be tapping into the psychological power of exclusivity to build intrigue around this secret game. Think about it. When something is rare or difficult to access, it automatically becomes more desirable. By keeping the game under wraps, Valve is creating a sense of mystery that only a select few are in the know about, even though hundreds of thousands of people have already played the game. But somehow with this one simple invite link and a toast image, Valve has created the perception of exclusivity. It's like Facebook in the early days. You could be invited by a friend to be able to sign up, but if your school wasn't part of the ecosystem yet, you couldn't join. So students on campuses spread the word to all of their classmates, doing everything possible to generate interest at their school. So when Facebook finally added your institution, tens of thousands of students around you would be browsing Facebook immediately. In a matter of months, Facebook with no marketing was in millions of dorms. This exclusive strategy isn't just about making a product seem more valuable, it's about creating a community of insiders, people who feel like they're a part of something special because they were there before the masses. Valve wants early adopters to feel like they're part of a secret club, to build this anticipation and loyalty long before the game is officially revealed. Now, Valve doesn't just want anyone in their not-so-secret club, they want the right people. And who are the right people? Well, based on Steam's demographics, it's hardcore gamers. The ones who like complex systems and complicated combat mechanics. The ones who live and breathe for games like Dota 2, CS2, and Elden Ring. Most Valve games, like Deadlock, are not targeting the game journalists who can't get past the first five minutes of a game. I respawn right in front of him, he kills me. Respawn, he kills me. Just stop and think about it for a second, and it makes sense. I've got a good few hours in Deadlock so far and it's definitely a more complex game. A crossover of a few genres that I've got a good few thousand hours invested in. It's not simple by any stretch of the imagination. 
but I personally get the game's appeal since I'm part of their demographic. However, if the mainstream media starts blabbing about the game, it could easily get misinterpreted, which then leads to potential players who would have loved Deadlock not picking it up. Now, this is the nature of media. I would love to only have my target audience watch my videos and play the games I develop. I would love to be able to pick and choose who to market my games to, but I don't have that type of control. YouTube dictates who watches, Steam determines who plays, and any criticism of me or my stuff is on full display. This is normally healthy and it leads to course corrections for people, products, and companies. However, in this situation, Valve is just wanting to test their game, not full on release it. And unlike most companies, Valve does have control over season plays since they own Steam, the primary PC marketplace for games. And they want the discussions about Deadlock to happen behind closed doors, in niche communities, and among people who will appreciate the game's complexity. They want the word to be spread by gamers to gamers. So Valve's goal right now with the beta isn't mass appeal, I'm just assuming here, but I believe they just want to curate conversation amongst their target player base without the media or influencers dirtying up the conversation. They want legitimate feedback on their once in a decade game. And before I get to the final point, for those new to the channel, I love analyzing and dissecting game companies like Valve. I have years of experience starting and supporting businesses, including my own indie studio, and I want to share the knowledge I have to help other developers. So if you like watching videos like this about business and psychology of games, please subscribe or join our Patreon. 100% of the money from Patreon and 50% of sponsor revenue goes directly to indie developers. Thanks so much for the support and let's get to the fourth and final point. Valve's new game is something entirely new and unique a mix and mash of multiple complex titles that you can't just talk about. You need to experience it. Think of games like Vampire Survivors. At first glance, it doesn't look that special, but once you play it, you get hooked. Or think Dota. When this game first got made in Warcraft 3, nobody had a clue how to play this thing or what was happening on screen. But once you learned how to play and experienced it for yourself, people realized MOBAs are beyond addicting and tons of spin-offs were made. So Valve knows that the first impressions can be misleading. They want people to feel and try Deadlock first, not just see others playing it. If you're innovating like Valve is, then trailers, leaks, and screenshots aren't gonna do Deadlock justice. The experience may or may not be for you, but Valve wants the first wave of players to dive in, get hooked, and then spread the word. Those that don't like it are to give feedback quietly through forums, while those that do will share the game with their friends. By keeping the game under wraps, Valve is making sure that the first impression comes from those actually playing the game, not from non-gamer journalists showing just simple screenshots. Valve wants to control the narrative around this game, and they may have the power to do it. Now, all this is speculation, but I believe all this secrecy around Deadlock is calculated. Valve is leveraging the Streisand effect and exclusivity to drive interest. And they are keeping the conversation under wraps and within specific player demographics because the game is complex and they want people to experience it firsthand. Simply put, I believe Valve wants you to know about Deadlock, but only in a way that builds the right kind of hype with the right people in the right way. And like Valve, I myself am looking for feedback on my game Fallen Worlds. There is a demo up on Steam and it's a four player co-op action roguelite. Still a lot of work to do, but go get a few buddies, play the crap out of the demo, and let me know how we can improve Fallen Worlds in our Discord link below. Also, let's not forget today's indie game highlight, Noita. The game is famous for every pixel being simulated, from the liquids to the rocks to everything else in between. It creates this sense of realism in a pixelated world. There's so much to discover in this game, and it really feels like it deserves the title of roguelike. So go check it out on Steam after you play the Fallen Worlds demo. Thanks everyone for watching. Peace.